Hi, my name is Eric Swanson. For the last 15 years, I've worked with a group called Leadership Network. And I've also worked for a, a technology company up in Boulder. And I've really become fascinated with the whole idea of the startup culture and what's, what's become known as the lean startup, uh, popularized by Eric Ries, another guy named Steve Blank. And when I first became exposed to the lean startup principles for a business, for a, te a tech company, I began to think, my gosh, this is a class in church planting. I just, I just couldn't help it. And so over the last several months in my work, um, particularly up in the Bay Area, I've given out over 40 copies of Eric Reese's book, The Lean Startup. I've given over, uh, I think, 25 copies of Peter Thiel's book, Zero to One. And Zero to One, Peter Thiel puts the thesis forth that the energy to go from nothing to something is very different than going from one to two. And so as a church planter, you're really in the church startup business. You're going from, you're creating something that never existed before with resources you don't have in a community that needs you. And so I, I really hope you, you, you kind of investigate this whole idea of lean startup. And I want to just share seven kind of concepts that you need to know about lean startups. Uh, the first one is what's called leap of faith assumptions. And every business to succeed, for every, every business has three leap of faith assumptions. One is that people want this product. Or service. Two, they're willing to pay for it. And three, they want to get it from you. If any of those things is not true, you don't have a business. And so when you kind of think of those same things, it's, it's the same things for, um, for your church. Apart from those three things, what, when you come to your town, what are the things that you're assuming? You might not even, you might not even write these, written these down, but you are drawn to start that church based on some leap of faith assumptions. Uh, written a couple of them down here, but one is that, that people have a spiritual hunger and are open to conversations about God. That might be one assumption you have. There's a, there's a critical mass of unchurched or unconnected believers here that are looking for a faith community. That's another assumption. People here want to be connected to a meaningful community that's making a difference in the world. That's the third assumption. Uh, people here are looking for a place to do life together. By the way, you ever hear non-believers talk about doing life together or, you know, we want to love on people? I, that's an assumption, okay? So, um, so people here want to be led or influenced by me and my team. That's an assumption. People here uh, would be willing to fully engage in a church if we structured it right. And maybe the last one, if we do church right, people will be willing to make, sustain, uh, to make it sustainable through giving of time, talent, energy, and treasure. So all of those leap of faith assumptions, those are the things that you thought, you thought of. And you may have been alone in your room. You may have been with a small group of your lead team. May, you may have been on a mountain with God. But all those are, they're just leap of faith assumptions. You don't know if they're true. And so the whole lean idea, uh, the whole idea of a lean startup is that each of those assumptions can be tested before you ever spend a dime on launching a church or raising any money. A big one is, you know, it's very interesting that 40% that of church planters have never, uh, have never uh, uh, led, led a person to Christ. 20% of church planters have never shared their faith with another person. And so when you want to see if, if people, if you think you can start a, a, a church among non-believers, can you start a Bible study? That's kind of the idea. Can I start a Bible study among non-believers? So each of those leap of faith assumptions has to be tested by what, what we call a minimum, building a minimum viable product. And so, for instance, when, when the founder of Zappos, and many of you use Zappos and get your shoes from Zappos, they started, rather than building a big supply chain and making deals with all the shoe owners and the shoe factories, all they did, this, the, the guy that started it, um, uh, Nick, Nick Swinmurn, he went down to a local shoe store and asked if he could take pictures of the shoes in that guy's store and post them online, and if somebody bought them online, he'd come in and play full retail for them. Well, the, the shoe dealer said that'd be great. And so he came in there, but he was testing the assumption that people are willing and want to buy shoes online. And, and so rather than, again, spending any money on the business, he just took pictures of shoes, built the website, and saw what happened. And so again, when you think of, I know that you know, you're sitting off in, in some place, and then you're called to some other place, you're, you're, you're kind of feel inspired because you got these great ideas. But again, those are just a leap of faith assumptions that can be tested. And so, this, so uh, a minimum viable product is really the smallest version of a product that allows you to get the maximum amount of validated learning, I'll tell you about that in a second, from your customers to begin the learning process as quickly as possible about what you're doing. So it, it could be that you just build a landing page of your church. And you say, we're a new church in this city, and we're, we're really... Uh, 
uh, targeting people who want to do this. Or we're, you know, we're building a, a church for young techies. Or we're building a church. However you say that, and you can change that a hundred times, but you don't have anything else except the landing page. Then what you do is you measure how many people clicked on that were interested enough. If you're interested in learning more, click this button. They click the button, and guess what comes up? The 404 page. It doesn't exist. This thing doesn't exist. But you've gotten enough information to see if what you're offering to people in your community, you know, you publicize through Facebook and Twitter and drive people to that website, if people are interested to click, if nobody clicks, you haven't got a good value proposition. And so that's how simple a minimum viable product can be, is just to see, does anybody e would anybody even be interested in this thing? The third term I want to introduce is, is kind of follows that, and it's called uh, split testing or A-B testing, where you have, where you think like, um, gee, I, I wonder if people would like a 930 service or an evening service. I wonder if they want to meet in a park or they want to meet in a, in a theater. And so rather than saying, making everything definitive, you run your church really as an experiment. And you say, we're going to try a lot of different stuff. And rather than asking people what they want, you observe people's behavior. You watch how people vote with their feet. So it's, it's uh, again, you don't just ask people what they want, but you, you observe and measure their behavior. The fourth thing, and, that, that, and, and what comes out of that measurement is what Eric Ries calls validated learning. Just like a scientist, you, you observe the results of, of what you get. So every, every leap of faith assumption must be tested, not in the building, not with your lead team, but in the streets. And so we must learn what, what, what your customers, the people you're trying to bring into your church, really want and what, say, say, what they say that they want. And we must be willing to discover whether we're on a path that will lead us to growing a sustainable business or not. And so the, the, the goal of a startup is really to, to learn and test our assumptions as quickly as possible. Stephen Blank, who really mentored Eric Reese in this whole area, he says this. He says there's no knowledge inside the room. And aren't we as Christians great at just having this feeling of being with our lead team? We get so inspired, and oh, the Lord's spoken. And, and we come away with these assumptions of what should work, and we feel like God has spoken to us. And so we can never really change those things. We stick on, we become perfectly successful at launching something that nobody really wants. And so, and so the whole thing is, uh, you know, so one thing that you need to be testing, the three big areas are, as I mentioned before, but how do you get customers? How do you keep customers? How do you grow customers? You know, how do you get people coming to your church? How do you, how do you keep them once they get there? And how do you grow them into, into leaders and multipliers? The fifth thing is, is, is the build, measure, learn cycle. And so you start something right away. And whether it's, again, your minimum viable product, you build that. And then you see how people respond to it. You measure it and then learn from it and then build it again. And build it again, build it again. And so you just keep, you, you keep iterating through that cycle as, as quickly as possible. The sixth term I want to introduce is something called actionable metrics. In other words, uh, one of the things that was kind of embarrassing, but Stephen uh, or, um, uh, Eric Reese introduced the term he calls vanity metrics. And so you have to kind of figure out what you're trying to do in your community with, with those people and measure that one thing. So instead, for instance, Airbnb does not measure how many hits they had on their website, how many people opened, opened up the Airbnb website in their mobile. They measure one thing, and that is uh, nights uh, of, of rooms rented. That's, a, that's what they measure. And so, again, so vanity metrics can be those things that give the rosiest pictures going on. Well, tell me how your church doing. Oh, man, we had 400 and, 430 people at Easter. You know, or we had uh, so many people like our Facebook site or so many people visit our website. You have to figure out what metrics really matter to you around, the, around attracting customers, keeping customers, and growing customers. You know, those are probably things you ought to measure rather than just the vanity metrics. And the last thing I want to talk about is what's called a pivot. And a pivot is when you discover through validated learning that, that the results don't match your leap of faith assumptions, you make a pivot. And if you ever played basketball or seen basketball games, it's a very common move where you keep one foot on the ground and you pivot the other foot and move it to get, to get in a better position. And so pivots is, aren't a change in the vision. You can trust the vision that God given you for the community, but a pivot is a change in the tactic of how you're getting there. And so the whole idea of a, a lean startup, you want to you, you want to pivot frequently to be effective in finding the right model to create a sustainable church. So your goal, and to think about this, but your goal is to make as many pivots as possible before you run out of money. 
to make as many pivots as possible. So learn as quick, go through that build, measure, learn cycle as, as, as quickly as possible. And so I hope, uh, I hope this kind of whets your appetite a little bit for the whole concept of lean startup and understanding um, church startups as, as, uh, as, as really as, uh, through the lean uh, startup lens. If I can recommend a couple books, the ones I've mentioned already are Peter Thiel's book, Zero to One, and the other one, Eric Reese, and a lot of videos online are uh, IES called The Lean Startup. And I, and I really think, I really think, even if you don't take this approach in starting your plant, if you live in any place that's a tech center that has a high uh, a concentration of technology, because you know these things, you'll be able to be conversant with the tech people and the business people in your community.